what we've got now is quite unique that over the last few decades, there's been quite a fragmented approach to Sumatran rhino conservation and recovery in Indonesia. Now we, we've kind of got through that. We've broken through that and there's, there's a single plan. The government, the Indonesian stakeholders, the international community are all behind a single plan. It's still very ambitious. It's quite audacious. It's mm. very expensive, <laughs> um, politically very challenging um, because it's so risky but everyone is behind that plan. And, and I think that gives us a huge amount of hope and optimism for the future. So we've been told that for a couple of years now that the looser ecosystem likely has the largest population remaining and maybe the only viable one. Um, does, does the evidence that we have still sort of support that claim that, that looser is sort of where maybe the larger viable population is? Looser certainly has the largest population. Um, how big it is and how viable it is, I don't know. The only place that's worth censusing is Lusa um, in terms of understanding how many rhinos are there and what their distribution is. Um, there's no point really counting rhinos elsewhere. Um, we really need to focus on finding them and bringing them into the conservation breeding program. So I know that prior to COVID-19, there was this, this, this plan, as you mentioned, coming together uh, to, to sort of start capturing rhinos again. That's something that hasn't been done at least proactively for a while. Um, and there was a lot of focus on looser because as you say, this is the, the area that we know has the most rhinos. Uh, how did COVID-19 sort of uh, impact that plan? Where is that at at this time? Um, and do you know if any rhinos in, in looser are, are being identified or how would they would go about doing that? So there's, two parts of loser there's a part with a population of rhinos and there's a part with a handful of individual rhinos mm. and so there's two different strategies there um the Sumatran Rhino Survival Alliance and all of the partners underneath that international and and Indonesian are focusing on those individual rhinos that are not in viable breeding populations. So for those, those rhinos specifically, there has been surveys going on uh, for a couple of years. Um, we have identified individual rhinos there and we are tracking them with an aim to catching them as soon as we have a conscient breeding center established uh, in Aceh. We have the permissions for that, um, and hopefully construction will begin um, in the next few weeks. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to start capturing those rhinos um, pretty soon and starting another arm of the National Conservation Breeding Program out of the HA. Okay. How COVID has affected this mm -hmm. is multifaceted. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been delays in country because people on patrol teams or survey teams have been testing positive so people are isolating training has been difficult we've been wanting to get people from different parts of indonesia together to share lessons and train each other peer-to-peer -peer and travel restrictions have been put in place so that's been complicated and, and delayed We've not been able to send international trainers to talk about, to train on captures and new drugs and new techniques for capturing rhinos. Like you say, rhinos have not been caught in Indonesia for many years and, and there's new techniques that we've learned from other parts of the world that we'd like to bring to Indonesia. 
Um, and then just meeting face to face has been difficult at certain times over the last few months, however many months it is these days. Um, so huge numbers of delays and complications have been ca caused by COVID. So yeah, it's definitely put us back multiple months. Is there any plan that if, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're unable to catch too many in the individual market, in the individual groups, would you look at the larger other group as well, especially looking for fertile females? We certainly hope we'll find enough rhinos in the areas that we are looking. Um, the numbers we're looking at are enough to start another arm of the, the national breeding program. So hopefully we will have enough. Obviously their viability as breeding animals is unknown until we catch them. Once we do that, the looking at the other population, I think we need to have that conversation as a community. Um, yeah. It's not off the table. It's also not on the table right now. It's, it's a conversation to be had. I think the, the stakeholders at the moment are comfortable with the idea of capturing these um, more remote, more isolated populations, which we know are not breeding. Um, I think we need to know more information about those animals and the other population before we start that conversation. Okay, that's great. Um, would, so let's say, you know, hypothetically, we are able to get a number of rhinos uh, into the new Aceh breeding center. Would then rhinos be sort of traded back and forth for breeding purposes? Is that something that's sort of uh, open to as far as going to Way Canvas to get new genetics? Um, you know, to mix the population uh, so that there's a more robust genetic profile? Yeah, the plan is to have three breeding centers under a single national breeding program. Um, so Aceh, uh, Way Canvas, and, and Kalimantan. Um, and it's supposed, the concept is that it acts as a single breeding program mm -hmm. with breeding loans between the different breeding centers. Um, so yes, absolutely, that is the plan. Um, We've not been able to test that yet because we haven't had animals to pair sure. up, but that's certainly what is envisioned, yes. Okay, great. And as far as the rhinos out there, uh, specifically in Lucer, what are the most uh, concerning threats remaining to the rhinos? Is it, you know, uh, poaching, snaring? Is it habitat loss? Is it just more that, you know, you're concerned that they're not, uh, there's not enough of them to sort of maintain a, a long-term population? Yeah, at the species level, by far the biggest threat is just the small population and the lack of breeding, which is why bringing animals in to semi-wild captive facilities is absolutely essential. Without that, we're very unlikely to have a next generation from which we can grow the species and look at recovering and rewilding eventually. So by far the biggest threat to the species um, survival is the lack of breeding. Um, Threats to individual animals, by far the highest threat is poaching. Um, and so we need to keep anti-poaching efforts and community outreach efforts going so that we don't lose individuals because every individual at this point is critical to the survival of the species. I think what has happened over the last three to five years is all the stakeholders in Indonesia, or a vast majority of the stakeholders in Indonesia have come together behind a single plan, the Government of Indonesia's Emergency Action Plan. And the international community is also almost entirely aligned behind this plan. So I think what we've got now is quite unique that over the last few decades, there's been quite a fragmented approach to Sumatran rhino conservation and recovery in Indonesia. Now we, we've kind of got through that. We've broken through that and there's, there's a single plan. The government, the Indonesian stakeholders, the international community are all behind a single plan. It's still very ambitious. It's quite audacious. It's mm -hmm. very expensive, <laughs> um, politically very challenging um, because it's so risky, but everyone is behind that plan. And, and I think that gives us a huge amount of hope and optimism for the future. We do know how to save rhinos. We know how to save them in the wild. We know how to save them in through conservation breeding. If we can keep everyone behind one plan, and if we can find the right level of resources to implement that plan in partnership with the Indonesian government and all of our local stakeholders, we can stop this species going extinct and we can put it on the road to recovery. 
but it's going to require a single effort and not a fragmented effort. Um, and that's where we are at the moment. I personally am very optimistic about where we are right now. Um, and hopefully once COVID's over, <laughs> we'll be able to really speed that plan up. 